Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We just heard from John chapter 19, verse 34. One of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. Blood. It's a major theme in John's gospel. And our Lenten series started with the words, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Why? Because this lamb would shed his blood. And this lamb would go on to say a few chapters later that whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. In John's gospel, blood serves one purpose. Blood covers sin. The sin that reminds us that we never measure up, that we never do enough. Sin that shows us how how far we fall short of the glory of God. Sin that makes a mess of everything as we live under the curse of the fall and spend our days trying to rid ourselves of its ugly consequences. Blood is the only thing that covers sin. But that doesn't stop us from trying other things. You know, we encounter the sin inside of us and the sin outside of us. We instantly feel compelled to blame someone, to blame anyone, to blame your husband, blame your wife, blame your parents, your teachers, blame the government and the system. And when we run out of people to blame, we cover sin with excuses. Now, thinking our sin is not as big of a deal as people are making it out to be, or that our sin really isn't hurting anyone. It's just this once, and no one will ever know. And then when we run out of excuses, we cover our sin with comparisons, finding relief that we aren't as corrupt as the real villains of this world. Or we stuff it down and we decide we just don't want to think about it anymore. Or we distract ourselves with busy schedules, with addictive substances, and anything else we can consume with our eyes, our ears, or our stomachs. But it's all in vain. Because there is only one solution to sin. And tonight we stand with St. John under the cross. He is our final witness to Christ this Lenten season. John was there. He saw it all happen. And, and tonight he gives us his testimony. And his testimony is true. There is but one way to deal with sin. And that's blood. Christ's blood alone washes away sin. And with blood, all sin is forgiven. And and while that forgiveness is free for us, and we rejoice in that and find comfort in that, Good Friday calls us to remember what it cost Jesus. His crucifixion at Golgotha was an act of utter brutality and barbarism. I mean, Jesus was first stripped before Herod's soldiers, and then he's stripped again at the command of Pilate, and he's stripped once more at the cross when the soldiers divide his garments by casting lots. Now, when Jesus is flogged by the Romans the next day, lacerations tore into his muscles. The whipping would have gone all the way from his shoulders down to his back and the backs of his legs, making it all the worse when the Romans threw Jesus onto that wood and drove spikes into his wrists and feet, mocking him, 
spitting on him. On the cross, Christ's arms were stretched upwards so his shoulders would be dislocated. The stress of his diaphragm limited his breathing. And in order to exhale, Christ had to push up with his spiked feet. For six hours, this breathing motion went on and on and on. With his wounded back rubbing against the coarse wood until exhaustion finally set in. As Jesus slowed down his breathing, his heartbeat would have become irregular and Jesus would have known that death is near. Once more, we listen to John's witness to us. One of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. The artist Peter Paul Robbins, a 17th century artist, had a unique way of capturing John's witness as he depicts this event in John's gospel in a painting called The Descent from the Cross. In the background of the painting, billows of black clouds linger after the three hours of darkness. In the foreground is Jesus. Rubens paints a sweeping diagonal line made by Christ's shining white shroud. Christ's head dangles to one side and his body hangs limp. Sections of his skin bear the greenish yellow color of death. In the left corner, of the painting is Mary, Christ's mother, who appears in blue. Mary is reaching up to her son. Her grieving face is lit by the witness of the cloth and the reflects her broken heart. Mary's skin matches her son's. And we can remember Simeon's prophecy that a sword would pierce her heart. We can hardly imagine Mary's profound sense of loss and grief. Another woman supports Christ's foot as it rests on her shoulder. It's a fitting position for her. It's Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus. As a disciple, she once sat at Christ's feet, and shortly before his death, she took expensive perfume and anointed Christ's feet feet. Next to her is another woman. The tears help identify her. It's Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene is so crushed by all of this, so much so that on Easter morning she runs frantically searching for Jesus. We know that the man standing on the ladder to the left is Joseph of Arimathea. His rich clothing gives him away. The one who would buy the burial spices and provide the new tomb. All for Jesus. Joseph is looking across the painting at a man in black. Nicodemus painted in a tunic the color of the night sky the famous night on which he first approached Jesus. And the person under Nicodemus is dressed in red. It's John, the gospel writer, the evangelist. It's John, the beloved disciple. It's John, the son of Zebedee and the brother of James. John's eyes are obediently fixed on Mary, after Jesus' last words 
to him from the cross. Woman, behold your son. John, behold your mother. There John is already caring for Mary in her deep sorrow. But why is John dressed in red? See, that's the driving question that Peter Paul Rubens wants us to ask. Why is John dressed in red? It's the same red that you see there on Christ's body, dripping from his head, his hands, his side. His blood continues downward until it pours directly on to John. See, John is dressed in red because John is covered in blood. John is saturated in blood. John is washed in the blood of Christ. It's the same blood that Christ sheds for you. And this is John's testimony. And John's testimony is true. Christ's blood covers your sin. The bottom right corner of the painting is a piece of paper with a rock on top of it. And the sign inscribed in Aramaic, Greek, and Latin, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Next to the inscription and rock lies an offering plate that holds the crown of thorns and more blood. Blood and an offering plate. It's Christ's offering, His gift for you. See, Peter Paul Rubens invites us to stand at the cross like John, to hold on to Jesus like John, to be washed in the Savior's blood like John, to be clothed in red like John. For this is John's witness to us. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold the blood that covers over all your sin. In the name of Jesus,